Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. We've just received an interesting telegram here at the studio, and I'll read it to you. It's addressed to Arthur Pryor, care of the Cavalcade of America. It reads, 85 members of the American Bandmasters Association, now in convention at the National Music Camp, Interlochen, Michigan, join with your vast radio audience in sending our sincerest greetings to you. Stop. From your Sousa days to the present time, the name of Arthur Pryor has been an honored one the world over. You have contributed in great measure to the ever-increasing popularity of the modern American band. Your program tonight will be thoroughly enjoyed by us all. Cordially yours, Frank Simon, President, American Bandmasters Association. Thank you very much, Mr. Simon. And now, before we proceed with this program in DuPont's summer series, The Cavalcade of America in Music, let us remind you again of the pledge that guides the work of research chemists in DuPont laboratories, better things for better living through chemistry. Arthur Pryor and his band open the program this evening with a number dedicated to one of the greatest personalities this country has known. It is a brand new march written by Arthur Pryor, and it is called Will Rogers, America's Cowboy Philosopher. It is dedicated to their mutual friend, Fred Stone. <laughs> one band that is familiar to all of us, the circus band. First, we hear it leading the great free parade. Next to the company is the death-defying deeds of arena, pausing appropriately when a breathtaking acrobatic act is to take place, accenting the thrill with a roll of the drums. What would a circus be without its band? The great free ring shows of the little one-horse affairs would be equally ineffective without the musical background. Arthur Pryor and his band bring us an impression of a circus which should take us back to our childhood days. Here comes the grand opening pageant.
program, we spoke of the American Bandmasters Association, which is holding its annual meeting this week. Founded in 1930 by Edwin Franco Goldman, this association has done much to develop standard instrumentation in bands rather than the former catch-as-catch-can method, so that today college and high school bands can procure the same careful musical arrangement that is used by the concert band. The color and descriptive powers of a modern band arrangement is particularly well shown as Arthur Pryor and his band play selections from Victor Herbert's tuneful operetta, Algeria.
interesting episodes have taken place during the tours of the great concert bands, and Arthur Pryor reminds us of two that occurred. One when he was solo trombonist and assistant conductor for John Philip Sousa, and the other when he and his own band were playing an engagement in Miami, Florida. The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont, brings us first to a scene in Kansas City, Missouri, about 25 years ago. The convention hall is crowded with eight or 9,000 Missourians who have already enjoyed a trombone solo played by their fellow Missourian, Arthur Pryor, but they are not satisfied. Let us join the audience on that day as Sousa's band plays its final selection. refrain from calling for Pryor during a concert for fear that the name might again be mistaken for Pryor. A few years ago, Arthur Pryor and his band were playing in Miami, Florida. After the concert, Mr. Pryor is in his dressing room when he hears a commotion outside. Oh, you're no, mistaken. you can't you're tell me. I mistaken. know. It's you're a mistaken. Key. It's a swindle. It's not Pryor's band, I know. But, my dear sir... Oh, I, I know, I tell you. It's not Pryor's band. What's all the excitement? Oh, Mr. Pryor, uh, this man says... Yeah, I repeat it. It's a cheat to swindle. You have a nerve to call yourself Pryor's band? Why, Some crank, Mr. Pryor. It ain't only me. You've swindled all that audience. What seems to be the complaint? Just this. You ain't Pryor. This ain't Pryor's band. I was always under the impression that I... I heard not... Pryor's band when I was a boy, back in St. Jim, Missouri. Pryor had a black beard. <laughs> You don't look any more like him than I do. Oh, I begin to see the daylight. Well, I'm sure I don't. Somebody's been impersonating you out in Missouri. No, nothing like that. This gentleman is thinking of the first Pryor's band, my father. You, your father? My father, Samuel D. Pryor, had a black beard and had a band back in St. Jude, Missouri. Well, you ain't by any chance little Artie Pryor. We used to play in your father's band, are you? That's right. Well, well, how time does fly. I guess you got the right to the name of Pryor's band after all. From a small town band to a great concert organization seems a long way, but the gap has often been successfully bridged. And what a difference between the type of music played by the small town band and the finale from Finlandia by Sibelius which will be played by Arthur Pryor and his band.
the concert band, as conceived by Patrick Sarsfield Gilmore, and developed by John Philip Sousa and Arthur Pryor, is heard by millions more than ever before thanks to the power of radio. The American bandmaster has a proud place in the cavalcade of America. John Philip Sousa says in his autobiography, When I shall feel too feeble to serve my public longer, I shall lay down my baton and say, I hope that long after my marches are forgotten, the clarion call of America, which I tried to make the keynote of my composition, will continue to inspire her children with undying loyalty. As an example of this, Arthur Pryor and his band bring us what is undoubtedly the most popular of all Sousa marches, the Stars and Stripes Forever. <laughs> chemistry takes us back to a crisp, cool afternoon last fall. Mr. and Mrs. Henderson are driving to the country for a vacation weekend with friends. Oh, I uh, forgot to tell you, Frank. I want to stop at the Bartlett farm. Now, dear? Yes, to tell Mrs. Bartlett we'll stop by Sunday evening for eggs. I'm going to put a lot of them down in water grass for the winter. All right, dear. Say, no detour this time. The new concrete highway is open. Oh, good, but that'll save us half an hour. It certainly will. And look at it, will you? What a roll. Mr. Henderson might have been surprised to know that the same water glass his wife mentioned in connection with preservation of eggs helps give strength, smoothness, and long life to that new concrete highway. But it's true. For chemical research long ago discovered that one of the very best chemicals for the all-important task of thoroughly drying or curing new concrete was our old friend water glass, or to give it its chemical name, sodium silicate. This product is made by fusing a good quality of sand with alkali and bears a close resemblance to glass, except that it is soluble in water. That's how it got the familiar name water glass. Sodium silicate is a mineral product and therefore fire retardant and its tough film protects against vermin. 
That's why it is widely used by makers of wallboard, insulating materials, and shipping containers. Sodium silicate also finds use in the making of rubber, paper, textile fabrics, and pottery. And soap manufacturers, among the first to employ large quantities, are using more every year because it material increases the cleansing qualities of their products. Thus, sodium silicate assists in the production of thousands of things concerned with our daily comfort. It is another example of how chemical research touches the lives of all of us, as described in the DuPont phrase, better things for better living through chemistry. <laughs> week at the same time, Arthur Pryor and his band will again be heard when DuPont continues its summer series, The Cavalcade of America in Music. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>